the Peter Francisco Soil and Water Conservation District orchestrated a farm tour on Rock Mill Farms Incorporated, a Holstein dairy operation in Buckingham County, Virginia. This tour, like many that the Peter Francisco District and other soil and water conservation districts conduct, serves to educate agriculture producers about best management practices that have been installed or are currently under construction on the farm through available cost share programs. Welcome to Rock Mill Farm. Owner and operator Steve Rainey. Thank you all for coming out. It's a changing world, everything, you know, every look like 20, 30 years, this new technology comes out and you have to get on board with, you know, all of that. Check it out anyway. Uh, and it's really improved our farming practices. Back in, uh, back when my, my father was uh, a young man uh, in the uh, late 30s, uh, early 40s, uh, this area through here, if, if you made 30 bushels of corn an acre, you had a bumper crop. Uh, today, uh, but the best we can do uh, on, uh, on, on this farm is about 180, uh, to maybe 200 bushels. If, uh, if we couldn't take advantage of uh, either the uh, manure that we have stored here or maybe tap into a, a source of, uh, of uh, poultry litter, which is another service that uh, DCR uh, has in the past, the uh, poultry litter transfer program, which we've used. Uh, if you've got soil that's low in phosphorus, especially low in phosphorus, uh, there are incentives to, to move uh, chicken litter from uh, areas that are high in phosphorus, where the chickens have been for a long time and the farmers have been uh, applying it, and moving into areas or fields that are low in phosphorus. And that way you utilize the phosphorus and you don't uh, oversaturate the soil and, uh, and lose it into the waterways. Many best management practices have been installed on Rock Mill Farms and Forkland Farms. These practices were incorporated through the cost share programs offered under the Natural Resource Conservation Service, Farm Service Agency, and the Peter Francisco Soil and Water Conservation District. The programs utilized were the Conservation Reserve Enhancement Program, the Willis River TMDL Program, the Virginia Best Management Practices Program, and the Environmental Quality Incentive Program. These programs provided the following conservation practices stream exclusion fencing, cross fencing for rotational grazing, water troughs with well and pipelines, trees planted in the buffer zones, liquid manure storage pit, a loose housing facility, a dry manure storage shed, cover crop practices to control erosion on crop fields. The practices that we've been putting in is, I guess the first one we did here was the storage pit, which we call the lagoon over on the dairy side. It's been a real uh, help to us. We, uh, it holds about uh, four to six months of our waste. And then we've been able to uh, pump that to the fields at a timely matter just before we plant. We, we got call share from, uh, to, put, to put the uh, lagoon in, uh, oh, 20 some years ago. Also, we, we call shared on the lagoon pump and, uh, and uh, one big spreader. But uh, it, it, this, this is fed underground. There's, we never break the crust. All our buildings inside the buildings uh, channel to, to the lagoon. Every bit that you, that you see from the cows, the, uh, the waste from the cows is totally confined. Uh, and it runs into a pit which goes into the lagoon. We can spread almost when we want. Instead of having to spread every day, seven days a week, sometimes take half a day. Wintertime, take all days, just haul the manure in there. We scrape it off in uh, uh, reception pit. And it's a gravity flow system and basically it vanishes like magic. And, and we just pumped today the other day and we put about 6,000 gallons to the acre. It's all nutrient management plan. We know what the crop needs. We know what we, what we need to replace it with. This is a manure storage for this area uh, where the concrete comes, where the cows stand on to eat, and we can just scrape it in, the, in this building and store it for uh, four to six months. And this is all the droppings from the cows while they're eating.
Behind you here is our, our cover crops that we've been putting in, planting for a number of years. You can see the wheat and vetch out there now. We have really been experimenting with a lot of the radishes that we've been planting in the fall. They die during the winter. They can't make it to the spring. They grow to about uh, maybe middle of December, uh, first of January. When the hard freezes come, they, it pretty much wipes them out. But by then, they've gotten up to about this tall in good years. And they, uh, most of the time, they are, they are put a hole in the ground about that big. And that rots and lets the water go down. And you know, that, that channel, earthworms just absolutely love them. They just thrive on them. We put in a couple of uh, loafing lots. There's actually about five or six of them here. These are two of the smaller ones. Uh, and we rotate this group of cows back and forth between the two areas, really between three areas. And they can't wait to get off concrete to just get out here and, 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 and lay out and lounge in this, and, on, on that grass. And uh, it keeps them really nice and clean, uh, which is, uh, makes a, a milking them a whole lot better uh, experience. The rotation, we do it to keep the, uh, the grass from be, getting overgrazed and then, you know, get rains and, you know, the mud will come up, you, you know, kill the grass. Because cows love to congregate in one field. They, they have a special field that you just love to get in. So we put the cross fencing in and that eliminates that. We can just steady moving around. Uh, the building goes up for uh, the sacrifice lot that the cows can go into in bad weather and keep from ruining our grass. It just really improves the stand. As you can see in the pastures, they have really improved over the years since the barn has been up. In the background, the barn over there that we uh, put up this past year uh, under the equip, it's about, I think it's uh, 40 foot wide and about 120 foot long. We have about, keep up between 80 and 90 uh, young animals in it uh, that, that has worked extremely well uh, they, they, they grow out good, their health is good, there's, there's no mud. We use it, uh, it takes a minimal amount of bedding. The air that passes through, it keeps it bedding dry. They have lockups, which makes it uh, easier to, to handle the heifers, to vaccinate, to dehorn, anything that, that needs to be done to them. These practices that you, you pick up through Peter Francisco Soil and Water and with uh, David Harris at uh, D, uh, NRCS uh, with, through the EQIP program, uh, all of it's beneficial to the farmer and to our neighbors and to whoever is downstream from us. The district and the NRCS staff assist producers with every step to ensure that they feel comfortable with the agricultural cost share programs. The first step in the program is to arrange an on-site meeting between the producer, the district, and the NRCS staff. This meeting is designed for the conservation planners to view the farm grasp the understanding of the current operations, determine the future goals of the producer, and discuss program eligibility in details. If the producer is eligible and interested in applying for any conservation programs, then the district and the NRCS staff can create a conservation plan for the operation. They can provide a conservation plan with several design option layouts and cost estimates provided through a current itemized value of products such as fencing, pipeline, water troughs, and wells. Once the producer agrees to a specific plan, they enter into a contract agreement with the district or the NRCS and are given a timeline of a year to complete the installation of the practices. The producer is responsible for all costs accrued during the installation of the practices. Farmers pay all associated costs up front and are reimbursed at the end of the project. Once the practices have been completed and approved by the district and the NRCS staff, the producer will receive their pre-approved cost share reimbursement payment. The Virginia Agricultural Cost Share Program typically offers a cost share rate of 75% of the total cost and a 25% tax credit on any out-of-pocket expenses. Although some select areas offer up to 100% cost share reimbursement for specific programs and properties located within designated watersheds. Districts can provide producers with a list of local vendors and contractors who are familiar with program requirements and standards. From the first day of sign up to the final practice implementation, 
district and NRCS staff will guide the producer through the conservation planning process. This video was made possible through the funding from James River Association and Altria. For more information on Virginia's agricultural cost share programs, please contact your local soil and water conservation districts.